Hello, good evening. Welcome to Look North. Our top story tonight. Protesters campaign against the plans to close all but eight of the ticket offices in our region. People rely on that face-to-face -face contact, whether it's about you know safety for young women and girls, antisocial behaviour, or some of the passive work that they do. It's not just about processing tickets, it's about really that presence at stations. We'll hear why the move could penalise disabled people. Passengers have been protesting outside Hebden Bridge Railway Station against the proposed closure of the ticket office. It's one of several protests planned in response to the government and rail company's plans to close ticket offices at stations and transfer staff onto platforms. Now, the government says it'll save money because most people are now buying tickets on their phone. Let's take a look at the details. In our region, nearly 30 stations will lose ticket officers. Here's the list of them. They include Halifax, Wakefield Westgate, Barnsley and Scarborough. Currently, you can go to a ticket office at all of these places and speak to a member of staff. In future, they'll be working on platforms instead and in many cases, for fewer hours. These are the only ones that are going to be staying open. Bradford Interchange, Doncaster, Harrogate, Huddersfield, Leeds, Sheffield, Skipton and York. Our transport correspondent, Spencer Stokes, has our top story. That ticket office is a service that we all appreciate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Campaigning for something that rail travellers have done since the days of steam, exchanging money for a ticket at a ticket booking office. But far fewer people are buying tickets over the counter. The mobile phone killing off queues at stations like Hebden Bridge. But passengers still like the idea of a friendly face on the other side of the glass. When I look online at prices, they are very, very expensive. They're hundreds of pounds. I need to go to the ticket office and they find me a much cheaper deal. People rely on that face-to-face -face contact, whether it's about you know safety for young women and girls, antisocial behaviour, or some of the passive work that they do. It's not just about processing tickets. Other stations down this line have been demanded. And you only have to look 30, 40 years later to look at the state of the building when the after the staff have been removed. It's the thin end of a wedge. On Northern, just one in six journeys are booked at a ticket office. Pre-pandemic, it was nearly half. Ticket machines and mobile phone QR codes are seen as the future. Currently, if you want a ticket or information, you can speak to somebody in the ticket office here. If the closure goes ahead, then staff will move from behind the glass and out onto the platforms where they're going to become known as journey makers. Responsibilities will include selling tickets, keeping platforms clean and tidy, and also advising passengers during times of disruption. But whilst the ticket office is staffed from 6.30 in the morning until 8.30 at night, the journey maker hours here will be from 7am until 2pm. The government says staff will be more visible, offering a better service. This is all about taking people who are currently under-resourced and behind glass and taking them onto the front of the station, onto the platform, to be able to better help all people, but particularly those that actually need help the most. So this will be uh, an advantage and a positive uh, for people that need the help. It's thought closing nearly a 1,000 ticket officers across England will reduce the amount of money being spent on running the railways. But train companies and the government haven't put a figure on it. Nobody's saying how much money it will save. We don't even actually know if it will save money. The railways are a public service. They may be partially run by the private sector. They're a public service. A consultation is taking place, but if the plan goes ahead, only eight stations in the region will keep ticket officers. Spencer Stokes, BBC Look North, Hebden Bridge. Well, Doug Pawley is a disability rights campaigner. He told me why he was against the closure of the ticket officers. They're talking about reducing the number of hours that stations are open and staffed. They're not just talking about shutting ticket offices. They're talking about shutting and removing station staff for a huge number of hours across the network. And disabled people need staff on our stations to be able to get across the stations, particularly if they're inaccessible. There's all sorts of reasons why we need people there. Safety, security, access, and it's so important. The government says that this is part of a cost-cutting exercise by by rail operators, where else do they cut their cloth? It's difficult, isn't it? I mean, 
after 13 years of austerity, it's difficult to say that they need to find money from elsewhere. But this is unfair in that these cuts make it unsafe and difficult or impossible for disabled people to access a railway. And it's just not right that this happens. There is an online consultation, but you take issue with that as well, don't you, as someone from um, the disabled community? The online consultation is only available on a website. A lot of people can't access that. It's not available in Easy Read, British Sign Language, audio. And the only way to respond is by email or by uh, web form or potentially by post. It, it's not accessible to the people who will be most affected by this. And I also think that some of the information in the consultation is a little disingenuous at best. What would you like to see happen now then, Doug? I think that the government should scrap this plan. <laughs> I think they should start again working with, instead of trying to spring a three-week consultation on us, they should scrap it and start again. Doug, thank you for your time. Thank you.